STV, votre télé. PM News on STV coming up. I do so swear these words were pronounced today by Clima Tangana, Cameroon's president of the Constitutional Council and members of his cabinet in front of both the upper and lower houses of parliament in Yaoundé today. Their duties and roadmap in this newscast. 2018 Women's Day celebrations is at the corner, but everything seems indifferent in the northwest region of Cameroon. Meanwhile, some men opine the advancement of women into this society is worth encouraging. This and more right ahead. Good evening and welcome to join us in today's 8 p.m. English newscast on STV. Clema Tangana, President of Cameroon's Constitutional Council and his members have sworn in accordance with provisions of the Constitution. The 10 men and one woman have made a solemn commitment before the National Assembly and Senate which convened today in a Congress in Yaoundé. Contents of their oaths with Larinetta Apaji Abongwa. With the right hand placed on Cameroon's constitution and the left hand up, directly opposite the symbol of the nation, all 11 members of the Constitutional Council have taken the oath of office. In conformity with the law of 2018-105 of 7 February 2018, appointing 11 members of the Constitutional Council, and the law of 2018-106 of February 7, 2018, appointing Atangana Clemang as president of the institution, all three articles of the law have taken effect this March 6, before the first Congress of the country which is made up of the Senate and the National Assembly. Going by the President of the Congress, House Speaker of the National Assembly, the choice of Atangana Clemang and his team is an effort of the President of the Republic to modernize Cameroon's democracy which still stands as a challenge. The 11 members of the institution are appointed for six years renewable. The Constitutional Council is enshrined in the 1996 Constitution, which makes the body an important component in the state's apparatus. Its functions, which were reformed by the Supreme Court, will now be assumed by the 11 members who have been sworn in today. Peter Saucier gives us the roadmap of the Constitutional Council. Political observers hold that the Constitutional Council has a political and judicial nomenclature in the exercise of its duties. The Conseil constitutionnel, dans sa composition, a des membres qui sont essentiellement nommés par une autorité politique. From a political perspective, members are named by a political authority who is the head of state. Its role as consultant and regulator of state institutions also gives it a political face. Qui régule le fonctionnement harmonieux des institutions de l'État. 
as a judicial organ, the Constitutional Council has a greater responsibility. Control the constitutionality des lois, c'est-à-dire veille à ce que les normes qui sont inférieures à la Constitution ne lui soient pas contraires dans ses dispositions. Première des choses. The body rules on the constitutionality of laws, ensuring that the law is applied correctly and also acts as judge on electoral matters over different elections and referendums. The ruling of the council comes 15 days after a matter has been put before it. However, the constitution is clear that the head of state might limit the duration to eight days. Its ruling are not subject to appeal. Pioneer members of the Constitutional Council have assumed duties, but as state officials wine and dine over this political achievement, questions over its credibility have come up. The worry here is whether it can carry out its duties in a highly centralized system. To experts, the fact that members are appointed by a political authority does not make them independent. Skepticism has also been raised on the fact that the mandate of the Constitutional Council has been reduced from nine to six years and that only state officials can refer matters to it. Nice Cameroon's democracy is what the freshly sworn in members of the Constitutional Council have to do. A call from the President of the National Assembly, Larineta Pajiabongwa. The Constitutional Council is created by law number 96-06 of 18 January 1996 on constitutional revision of 2nd June 1972 modified by law number 2008-001 of April 14, 2008. These pioneer members of the institution have as mission to rule on the constitutionality of laws, treaties and international agreements. The institution also has the power to regulate internal regulations of the National Assembly and the Senate, conflicts of competence between state institutions, between the state and regions, like the Anglophone crisis. When we talk of the crisis that we have in Cameroon, they don't have only one solution. There are many solutions that uh, will gradually calm down the, exist, the present scenario. Section 48 of the Constitution stipulates that the Constitutional Council watches over the regularity of presidential and parliamentary elections as well as referendum operations. For the SDF parliamentary group, this 2018 is a year to witness how effective the Constitutional Council can be in executing its missions. Our problem now is the elections coming, uh, municipal elections, presidential elections, and legislative. That is our problem now. And we think the new nominated member of the uh, Constitutional Council will do their job. And the SDF today don't have anything to say. We are waiting the member in the, on the floor to see what to do. Out of the 11 members that have been sworn in, Three members, including the president, have been designated by the president of the republic. Three others by the House Speaker of the National Assembly with the Bureau's approval. Three by the president of the Senate with the Bureau's approval. And two by the Supreme Magistracy Council. All this is in accordance with Section 51 of the law creating the Constitutional Council. On to other news, Cameroon's economy is facing shocks from the fall in commodity prices and insecurity, forcing the country to take a loan under the extended credit facility scheme of the International Monetary Fund. Peter Saucier presents the economic state of the nation and what government must do to meet present challenges. After years of economic turbulence, Cameroon has returned to the IMF to be schooled on how to revive its bumpy economy. The government over the years has blamed the situation on the drop in basic commodity prices and the fight against terrorism. 
but the Bretton Woods outfit notes that the decline in customs and foreign revenues, as well as the slowdown in the national economy, has put considerable pressure on public finances, forcing the country into indebtedness to fulfill its sovereign missions. Economic critics on their part complain that Cameroon's timid growth rate and huge borrowing spree is due to the lack of proper project planning at the level of the Ministry of Finance and that of economic planning and regional development. They base their claims on the fact that external shocks were on site, but government did nothing to keep the economy stable. In the face of this disturbing situation, Cameroon has reached a 390 billion franc CFA loan deal under the IMF's Extended Credit Facility Scheme, aimed at reaching the goals of the Growth and Employment Strategic Paper. As spelled out in the 2018 finance law, the challenge is to ensure quality and rigorous budget management through the expansion of the tax base, control of public spending, and debt sustainability. The ministries in charge of implementing government's economic and finance policies, whose heads have interchanged seats following the March 2 cabinet reshuffle, must come up with an audacious plan to ensure that the execution of the 2018 finance bill reflects the budgetary policy of the state and fiscal discipline. For this to happen, economists are proposing that unrealistic predictions on the country's growth rate must be avoided. A viable and results-oriented planning and execution of projects must come into play, they say. We open our 2018 Women's Day package for tonight, where the International Women's Day is at the corner, but the heat is yet to be felt in the northwest region of Cameroon, with the Women's Day fabric scarce in some tailoring workshops. While some are preparing, others simply have no plans. Lovet Bear, Ignacio Samabe. Few days to the International Women's Day celebrated every March 8, the ambience is yet to be felt in the Northwest region. Some tailoring workshops in Bamenda do not even have the Women's Day fabric hanging in their workshops like it has been in past years. Some tailors say no customer has shown up requesting for the fabric or to sew the Women's Day fabric. Any customer as far as this year is concerned. The other previous years, on our countdown to women's discrimination in Cameroon, I need to know such to know what some men in the city of Douala think of female empowerment. The area is in southwest. Things are not moving well, so on our countdown to take their little money that they have on our countdown to spend on something that cannot even help their children. Our newsroom is in Bamenda now. No one customer has not yet seen of female. So I don't know, maybe they are still coming or not. I mean, that town is not the, the town we used to know in the past. Like now, we don't even have work. People are not even buying the fabric. I was teaching something else. As At first, we would have seen this workshop full with uh, the Women's Day fabric, but there's nothing. There's nothing as of now. So. It's not moving. While some women in the city of Bamenda are planning on how to celebrate the upcoming International Women's Day, others say they have no plans of celebrating the day. I'm celebrating the Women's Day. I will do my best because I've never done it before. That day I will go to the well, and uh, march the best. and enjoy myself somewhere else. I don't have any preparation for Women's Day because Anglophone Zone is having problems and they don't want us to be celebrating things when we are not happy. I don't have any Women's on my program. I'm not really preparing anything because if I don't have work, how do I feast? There's no work, so there's no way for me to even go out and feast. So, as for me, there's nothing as concerns the Women's Day celebration because I don't work. It's only through this, uh, my job that I do that I can even have money to feast. So. On our countdown to Women's Day celebrations in Cameroon, our newsroom sought to know what some men in the city of Douala think of female empowerment. Their reactions in this report. It is often said, educate a woman and you educate a nation. This adage is slowly but surely being implemented in the African society today. Cameroon is not left out with 20 female senators and about 29 female mayors. To say women are joining the entrepreneurial train. A move which to some men is at the detriment of the society. Entrepreneur de nos jours vraiment c'est un risque pour le foyer pour moi d'abord. 
To this man, the place of the woman is at home and nowhere else. Le mari travaille et elle s'occupe des enfants, c'est tout. He, however, admits that being supportive could be useful to the couple. Another man rather encourages female autonomy. Je dirais que les femmes entreprenantes sont des femmes qui ont une bonne vision. Saying it is a good vision and contributes to the financial status of a home while letting the woman grow. À la maison, comme femme au foyer, il faut apporter du sien. In this 21st century, several women have chosen not to be at the waiting end at the detriment of their homes, some say. Je dirais que c'est une bonne impression, sauf qu'il ne faut pas oublier qu'à la base, la femme qui est notre mère, notre soeur, elle doit d'abord... To this Douala resident, being financially stable is great, but the family always comes first. De toute façon, ce qui reflète, ce qui est fait dans votre entreprise reflète aussi la manière dont vous vivez au sein de votre famille. This notwithstanding, women continue climbing the entrepreneurial ladder in Cameroon and Africa right up to the level of the presidency. As women prepare to commemorate a day dedicated for them, some medical experts choose to do sensitization exercises against certain diseases. To a dermatologist here in Douala, bleaching should be avoided because it could lead to diabetes. More in this report. Black, some say is beautiful, others say it's natural. Good morning, life. Yeah. I can see very clear. She just a shining a broad daylight. Being beautiful this 21st century to many entails being fair in complexion. But how can one move from black to white? Bleaching. Being transformed within a couple of days or months has been made easy through a mixture of steroids, hydroquinone, javel, and many more. To doctors, these products are harmful to the skin, particularly injected steroids. Bleaching products can lead to the diabetics, mostly through what we can call the steroid. The steroid we can give through the blood or through the muscle. And uh, usually, when you give the steroids during a long time, mainly with high doses, high doses, it can increase the, the blood sugar. And if the blood sugar increases for a long time, then it becomes diabetes. Injecting bleaching products into the skin kills the body's resistance and increases the sugar level, causing diabetes. I don't think, no, it can't lead to diabetes uh, because, uh, because if you use only the products you apply on the skin, it's difficult that it can lead to diabetes. And if you use the products that doesn't include the steroids, it won't lead to diabetes. So if uh, we can think about diabetes, it's only about the product that can be injectable and which contain steroids. Those studies have not proven that simple skin bleaching could cause diabetes. Dermatologists advise that once diabetes is diagnosed, those practicing the act of bleaching should consult a doctor for a progressive stop and begin treating diabetes immediately, a disease which according to the 2016 World Health Organization report is the fifth killer disease in Cameroon. Let's get news out of Cameroon with VOA. In Port Loco in northern Sierra Leone, residents voiced their support for the ruling All People's Congress and its new flag bearer, ex-foreign minister Samura Kamara. The current president, Ernest Bai Karoma, must step down this year. Supporters say the APC government under Karoma has achieved a lot in Port Loco. Electricity. For the past 20 years, we never have lights in Port Loco. We only use Kabataikas. We use 
small solar lamp, but now we have electricity. We've seen a lot of improvements in our country. We have good roads. When you are going to Freetown, you imagine as if you are in outside country. You see, we like to see more development. But APC is criticized for its handling of the Ebola epidemic. There have been accusations of corruption and financial mismanagement. The International Monetary Fund recently withheld some aid until after the polls. The APC's longtime rival, the Sierra Leone People's Party, is based in the south. In the town of Bo, the party faithful prepare to once again support their candidate, retired Army General Julius Mada Bio. Bio did a brief turn as head of state in 1996 after seizing power in a coup. He lost the 2012 election to Karoma. The whole of, I'll tell you, Eastern Province and the South province is for the SLPP. The western area, we go 50-50. So the north, we are a district that is ready to vote for us, overwhelmingly. So just a small number that is left for them. We are going to kick them out of power, trust me. The APC and the SLPP have dominated Sierra Leone politics since the 1960s. But this year, there is a potential dark horse, a new party called the National Grand Coalition. Led by former UN official Kanda Yumkela, the NGC has galvanized youth with pledges on education and development. The NGC has pulled supporters from both of the major parties, including in Bo. The last election, I voted for the SFPP because we never knew that uh, um, the message, the type of messages that Dr. Yumkela is preaching. We never, we just voted for the old party because we thought. Uh, uh, um, it was our party. But now that Dr. Yomkela is on board and we've heard his messages, his messages are very rich to us. There is no stronghold for SAPP any longer because NGC is infiltrating in every area of uh, 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 any fracture in, in, in the country. To win the presidency, a candidate needs 55% of all the votes. With a total of 16 presidential hopefuls on the ballot, many analysts predict this race will require a runoff. Jason Patinkin for VOA News, reporting from Port Local and Bow, Sierra Leone. We pull the curtains for today's 8 p.m. newscast. Thank you so much for watching. Joy Harriwana and John Paul Sama later tonight for the program La Presse Profil Match. STV, votre télé.